What's up, everybody? Today we are doing my top 13 favorite horror movies. Now, I would have done top 10, except I just could not pick because this year I have been doing basically one horror movie a week with Jared Samarco. And if you haven't checked out his channel, you should definitely go check it out. He does a lot of good horror movie reviews as well as other ones, too. I was woefully behind for my entire life on the horror genre, so he's been helping me catch up. So there's still a lot that I haven't seen, but... There are a lot that I saw this year that I was super excited about. So we're going with top 13 because 13 is a fun Halloween number and uh, I'm excited. Now I'm also going to be doing at some point um, my favorite thrillers or psychological thrillers. And so I've kind of split them up. So to give myself um, some more options for movies that I want to talk about as I define horror, that's more about monsters and, you know, jump scares and really scary it, it, it blurs the line a little bit, so there might be some on the other list on this list that, you know, you could be like, oh, I, I think you could have put them on the other ones, but whatever. Let's get started. At number 13, Us. This is a crazy movie. This is Jordan Peele's second movie, and it was another home run about doppelgangers basically living underneath of us and coming up and what would happen if we ran into them and what would they do to us if they wanted to kind of replace us. And it is just full imagery and symbolism, which was a really cool thing about this one. Get Out had a little bit of that, but this really layers on the details and the Easter eggs. And although it is a little confusing and there are some little open-ended things, it's still a very interesting and creepy movie. Elizabeth Moss and Lupita Nyong'o specifically do a really good job at being creepy as hell. It's such a good movie if you like to get out you'll definitely like us because it's just super interesting from beginning to end and you will hate the time 11 11. number 12 the blair witch project i was really surprised when i watched this at um spoiler alert the lack of witch that's in the blair witch project but it's still an amazing movie a lot of people actually really hate it and I can see that because not a whole lot actually happens during the movie, but I think that's where it's really brilliant because it is very well acted. It is acted like it is normal people not trying to pretend to act, not trying to pretend to be normal. They just seem like they really are. And although nothing actually happens really until close to the end, it's still so claustrophobic and, and it's so, like, you feel like like they're lost in the woods, so you feel like you're running around and you're just getting super on edge and things are sort of starting to happen here and there and it feels like something's closing in on them. But the last shot is really what sold this movie for me. I have I still think about the last shot. It is just haunting because it just ends where it needs to. Check out The Blair Witch even though you think you might not like it. It was filmed in Maryland, so that's pretty cool. But also, I'm never going into the woods here. Number 11, Child's Play 2017. Now, I had a really hard time with this because I saw both Child's Play, the, the original and the 2017 version, one week apart. And I loved both of them. And they both have very great aspects to them that I could have easily chosen either one of them. But the reason I went with the 2017 one is because it has a layer of emotion I did not expect to come out of a horror movie. I almost cried a couple of times. I don't cry a whole lot during movies, which is weird. I feel really sad, but I don't cry. This one actually almost made me cry. And it's weird saying that coming out of a horror movie, a slasher movie about a little doll. Not only is it very scary and inventive with the way that it kills people, and Mark Hamill does a wonderful job as usual, but it just has another deeper level of connecting with that doll. And so that's where it really got me. And I thought that was a really, really awesome thing to come out of it that I would not have expected. While the original is somebody possessing a doll, this is the doll itself is evil. And I thought that was really cool because that was an excuse to be able to do it again differently with a new take on it, which I thought was awesome. At number 11, The Witch. I've talked about this one in my movie suggestions, so I will keep this one brief. But if you saw it, you know that I like it not only for the horror aspect, but for the kind of fall feeling aspect that it also has, you know, like these 16, 17, 1800s I'll be honest, I'm not really good with history, but that era of, you know, farming and, and colonialism and, you know, religion and everything, and it's really cool, it's very creepy, and especially the end, there's one aspect of it that makes it super creepy, 
and it has to do with a voice. That's all I'm going to say. Check it out if you haven't seen it, but if you have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's creepy as shit, especially if you're wearing headphones. Number nine, It, 2017. I had not seen the original TV movie of It, either part one or part two, but I went into this thinking, okay, like I'm not a huge, I don't, I don't have a huge fear of clowns or anything, but it does look very creepy, especially from the trailer. And I was pleasantly surprised because of something that actually, I have a reason for liking a lot of these on my list, is because it actually has a lot of heart to it. It's not just your regular slasher that is just, okay, people die, and you have a little bit of characterization or whatever, but it has, like, the core group of kids. You really come to love them, and they have their whole bond, and just the town itself, it feels like there's more to this than just the clown. The other thing I really liked is that even though it does seem here and there like a, your standard horror movie with standard jump scares, they have a lot of really cool inventive ways about making it scary. Um, for instance, there is a time when Pennywise comes out of, I believe it's a fridge, but he's all contorted and you kind of see him, you know, put himself back together. And it was things like that that I was like, I thought that was really cool. And you were able to see Pennywise more, which usually makes it less scary. But because there were so many interesting things that they did with him, it was like, okay, you're, like, you're being confronted with this giant clown 24-7. It's terrifying. But yeah, it has a lot of heart to it, which I really like too. At number eight, The Thing. I really like The Thing because I like those 80s horror movies that can be a little cheesy, but mostly are just really well done, especially for being in the 80s. And the practical effects that came out of it with the prosthetics and the costuming and the monsters and everything. And it's, it's very Shining-like in terms of they're in the snow and they're all huddled together in this one place that they can't leave and you know anybody could be infected with this thing and it's kind of like who's going to be the last um, person standing and the end I won't tell you what it is but the end is kind of interesting because it's a little open-ended Kurt Russell is in it and I love him he's amazing and he did a really good job of like taking charge and it's a very you know like like masculine movie it's just all these guys and you know, they're running around and shooting things and blowing stuff up. But it is really cool. It is, it's just a cool, secluded movie. Uh, so that was that was really cool. I, I love the 80s ones because they're scary, but they don't actually, like, disturb the crap out of me. Like, I'm not going to be able to sleep afterward. So they're, they're fun to watch, you know? Fittingly, at number seven, we have The Shining, which is also, like I just said, in the snow and it's secluded and you're kind of by yourself and claustrophobic, sort of kind of going mad. You can't ex escape. And I had a hard time trying to decide between these two which to rank. And the only reason I went with The Shining as above The Thing is because it is so iconic. And it's just a whole experience. And, you know, everything about it from the, the twins um, to the maze to Danny riding his bike down the hall. It's just, it's such an experience. It, everybody knows it, obviously, the axing and everything. And... And I, Jack Nicholson is a hit or miss for me, but in this, I really liked the over-the-topness, um, which is usually weird, but I think in this, it, it really works. And, and Kubrick, as much as I disrespect that guy uh, and his filmmaking techniques um, in terms of how he was on set, I just, I can't say that this is, a, you know, anything but a great, great thriller and, and horror movie. And just the whole thing from start to finish is just an experience. And number six, Oculus. I would never have thought that I was going to put something like this on this list because it's not really a well, you know, like a well-known one. But wow, this movie blew me away. It's Mike Flanagan who did Doctor Sleep and um, Haunting of Hill House and recently Haunting of Bly Manor. And I'm very excited that he went to the college that I went to because wow, this movie was insane. It's so incredibly well crafted. I don't know if I talked about it before on another movie suggestion list, but this movie is so well crafted in terms of its editing and its pacing and cutting back and forth between time periods, which he does really well. You don't know what's real and what's exactly going on, but you're still sort of able to follow it. It's just insane that this movie is so precisely done and eerie at the same time. There are just some things that they like catch on camera in, in the movie that, ugh, they, they, I don't know what it was about them, but they're disturbing. It's a really cool concept. And number five, Scream. Again, not one that I thought I was going to be putting on here because I thought when I first saw about it, you know, with all the other slashers, I thought, okay, it's just another slasher movie. 
this is like a really cool murder mystery whodunit in a slasher horror movie. And of course you got the moment, the intro at the beginning that could be its own short film with Drew Barrymore. And the whole thing is just super cool. And it's got an incredible cast, Nev Campbell, um, Matthew Lillard to play Shaggy, um, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, even Henry Winkler is in it. There's just like a bunch of people in this movie and it's just super cool. And what I, I like Blair Witch, what really got me is the end. The end was so cool. And because there's a twist, obviously, but because just the casting was so good and it's got some backs and forths, that it really misleads you. And it was just surprisingly very, very entertaining. At number four, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. OG. This was actually one of the first horror movies I ever saw. I saw it like four or five years ago with my aunt and it was on a big screen. And it's creepy and scary because it's low budget. You think, oh, this is going to be really bad and cheesy. Oh my God, no. If it was like high budget, it would have been like nowhere near as scary because it just feels like this out in the middle of nowhere, someone recorded this with a camera, even though it's not handheld footage. It just feels like it's grainy and it's eerie and you don't know what's completely going on. And then it's just, it scares the crap out of you because it's just like 30 straight minutes of people being chased around with a chainsaw, which again, it seems like, okay, that's your gener generic slasher movie that's like, if you're, you know, don't get scared by gore, it's not going to be scary, right? No, because it is weird and it is out in the middle of nowhere and it, it just, it, it's marketed as something that's like, you know, this happened in real life. It's just so gross and disturbing and I loved it. Number three, Get Out. This is just such a solid movie. Jordan Peele's first movie and he hit it out of the park with this one. It's so good. It's so tight and well done. It's got some funny moments, but it's also just got some really terrifying moments, which even though this really should be like psychological thriller on my list, it is pretty scary and horrifying because of the things that they do to these characters and because it's like real life horror. Like I said with Us, it's one of those that you can either watch it just normally and be like, that was really great. Or you can watch it for all these Easter eggs and details and be like, wow, I picked up on that and that and that. But unlike Us, it doesn't really have any vague open-ended questions or things that it didn't explain well. It's just like really tight and such a, a important messages. And it was, it's just so entertaining. Like you just, you got to watch it because it's just such a good solid movie. That's like, for me, it just makes me want to write stories and make movies. At number two, The Conjuring. I really thought that this was just, you know, your run of the mill demon movie. No, I've seen the first two. And although I like both of them, the first one is my favorite because I felt comforted by these two main characters who are the demon hunters and the exorcists because or at least the people who catch them on camera because they have such a good relationship it actually like i said about some of the others has heart like like it it's not just your generic movie it's got a lot of like actual emotion to it. it it was really good and while again also being a demonic possession movie which has some really good scares and especially towards the end it is it is terror it's chilling because of how real that could be and the things that happen are just like Ugh. and number one hereditary this film has shaken me to my core it still gives me nightmares i still i feel creeped out and just completely terrified by it i've seen it once a year ago I could not sleep or look in a corner for the next, what's today? It's slow burning. And honestly, the first like 45 minutes or most of it, actually, the first like half of it isn't really even scary. It's just super heavy and like depressing. And you're like, okay, I, you know, this is really heavy and like it's good so far. But, you know, I, I don't really think that there's anything scary. Oh my God. Because the last 30 minutes, oh. It just, in typical Ari Aster fashion, it's so slow. And then, wow, it just really gets you for like 25 to 30 solid minutes of just super scary. And oh, the reason it's one number one is because not only the effect it had on me and that it's actually scary and good and well-written, but it's super, super well shot and directed and filmed. How this did not get nominated for anything is 
beyond me. And talks about like deep themes of like mental health and everything. But the way it's shot, there's one there's one shot in particular. There's a few, but there's one shot in particular that will haunt me to the day I die. If you've seen it, you have to know what I'm talking about. It doesn't point out something to be scared about. It just lets you see it. It is so good. I love this movie. And that's why I never want to see it again. So yeah, those are my top favorite horror movies. And of course, there's still a ton I need to see. There's a, you know, I'm, I'm really still catching up. Yeah, so stay tuned. We're going to be doing my top 10 psychological thrillers. And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and Halloween right in the middle. I'll see you guys later.